Welcome back to the channel. When last we parted ways, we were building this, which will hopefully be a high gain GMRS dipole, a three half wave dipole. So, the only thing I've done since that video is I put some epoxy in here to stabilize everything, and I've tapped the ends of this antenna. And the idea about tapping the end of the antenna is just so that we can thread something on there and get a fine-tuned adjustment. And I did run into a little bit of a snag. As I was tapping this end, it broke. So I lost about an inch off of this end of the antenna, which originally I was just going to use MIG welding tips that were tapped to fit on the end of this. So that idea kind of went out the window because now I'm a little bit short. So I could have scratched everything and just started over. But I thought, don't I have something that's cylindrical that I can tap? It's a little bit longer than a MIG welding tip. And, well, yeah, I do. So these, of course, are made out of brass. And I was able to tap the end of it and in that configuration now we can thread those controversial items on the end of our antenna so that when we get it up in the air I can fine-tune it to get the best SWR match where I want to transmit. Now uh, the wires are made of copper and my cylindrical objects, which shall remain unmentioned, are made of brass. And there is a possible issue of corrosion because of the two dissimilar metals. But what I'll do is I'll put dielectric grease in between those two. And then when I make my final adjustment, I will, uh, after I make my final adjustment, I'm going to paint everything. So once it's painted, uh, it'll all be sealed from oxygen and it should be fine. But before we do any of that, what we'll need to do is we will need to go ahead and glue everything together. So the way that I'm going to accomplish this is I've got a piece of PVC pipe here. This happens to be three-quarter. It's the same stuff I used in the GMRS J-Pole and what we'll do is we'll run the coax up through the center of this and then we'll just shove this on. We won't glue that end of it. And then on the other side what I have is this piece of pipe with an adapter. So this will be glued. And once I glue this up with typical PVC cement what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and then just put some hose clamps around it and once I put hose clamps around it like this up against the mast it'll hold everything in place. This pipe is about three feet in length. I might make this a little bit shorter. I'm torn between standing it away from any other metal as far as possible so there's no interference but then if I get too far it's going to be clamped to the same mast as my 2 meter astroplane and I already know that these astroplane designed antennas don't like radials so the coax that's inside of this PVC is going to act like a radial so it's it's going to be a compromise I have to figure out a length that gets it away from the mast as much as possible but yet doesn't ruin the, uh, the 2 meter astroplane's pattern so I'm thinking half a wavelength would probably be enough, that's about 12 inches, but I'm going to go at least a full wavelength, which is about 24 inches, and maybe a little bit more. <clears throat> the longer this is, the more leverage it has. When the wind blows, it's going to be trying to, to break this connection. So I definitely think it needs to be shortened a little bit. I don't know how much yet, though. We'll work that out. But I can go ahead and glue it together and make my cut later. And to do that, we're just going to use ordinary, everyday pipe cement.
And we'll let that set up for a few minutes. Okay, now what I'm going to do is drill an excess hole for the coax to come off the mask and, and go up inside of this tube. Next step is for me to go out and just make this cut. And you can use anything for that hacksaw, sawzall. I like to use a uh, cutoff wheel like you would use for exhaust that makes a nice clean cut. So I'll do that. I'll be right back. And we're back. So I've got this cut off. And now I've got the coax run up through the center. So I could run this all the way in and pull it out the other side. I did trim this pipe down to about 28 inches. And then what we'll do is we'll strip that and we'll solder that connection to our antenna and then we'll push that on and we'll be good to go. Before I do that though, I want to give this a coat of paint. So I'm going to paint this. And the reason I paint PVC is because, well, two reasons really. Uh, number one, this stuff, UV will degrade it, so if you leave it up in the sun for a long time, it'll start to turn brown and get really ugly. And then the second reason is that here in the desert southwest, our skies are usually about that color right there, that shade of blue. So I kind of paint all my antennas that color. And uh, I'm going to build a vertical here in the next couple of weeks. And since that one's starting in on the ground, I'll probably paint the bottom section of that a different color. I haven't made up my mind yet what that will be, but it'll probably be some shade of brown. But this one's up in the air, so it's going to get that shade of blue. So let me go do that, and I'll be back. Okay, we've got it painted. I've got the coax running through the center of it. I've got the wires tinned. Stripped and tinned, ready to go. And we do need to talk about how we adjust this antenna a little bit. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this. So there's two adjustments to this antenna. The first adjustment, of course, is going to be by sliding our brass cylinder in and out on the ends. And then the second adjustment is here in the middle. So we can change where the coax goes on. We can move that connection in and out. And it does two things for us. It changes the length of our total length of our antenna a bit to tune. So it's another way to make it's another way to make a length adjustment. But also Because we have two conductors in parallel, this, this section of the antenna is going to act like a transmission line. And transmission lines can be finicky at times, so as I move this back and forth, I notice as I came closer towards the end of it, the standing wave ratio would go up. So then I would move it back in, and the standing wave ratio would drop. So when I was adjusting it earlier today, or earlier last week I should say, I was able to get a good standing wavelength on this thing, but we we'll, may have to make an adjustment or two to get it where we want it. So one of the reasons I've waited a couple of weeks before making part two is I've been listening to the repeater that's coming off of Mount Potosi, which is about 40 miles from here. And I wanted to get a kind of an idea of what the signal strength off that repeater was just listening to GMRS frequencies through my 2 meter antenna that I put up about a month ago. And uh, I just want to get it a feel for the signal strength. That way when I put this up I can look at those same repeater numbers and kind of get an idea if this antenna is doing what I think it's doing or not. By the model, 
this antenna is going to have about 2 dBi gain over a dipole. So it's about 7 or 8 dBi gain. It's a pretty strong antenna. It should do very well. So let's go ahead and solder this thing together. And there we go. Ready to test with the VNA. I'll get that fired up. Okay. This dimension here from the inside of this plastic to the outside of our our brass cylinder. I stuck a rubber cap on the top one so that water doesn't collect in it, but it's 10 inches. So 10 inches from here to the tip of this on both sides. And our VNA reading if I hold this thing out in free air it is pretty good. It's a little low on frequency at about 460 464, I guess not really. 464, it is 1.1 1 .1 to 1. And then if I take that up to 468, we're 1 1.4 to 1. So I'm going to shorten it just a little bit because I would rather be lowest of around 467 where all the repeater inputs are. And we'll check it again. And that's pretty good. 1.3 and a 465 or 1.1. So we'll go in just a little bit more. And that's pretty good. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because once it's on the roof and once it's going through the combiner and an extra section of coax, I'm going to have to check it again right at the radio anyway. And that's what you want to do. You want the SWR check to be at the radio, at the PL259 that screws in the radio because um, the radio is the component that cares about SWR. If it's too high, it's just going to roll back power. So, anyway, um, I think we'll go ahead and we will go outside and mount this up in the air. And hook everything back up and come back down and do a V&A sweep right at the radio and see what we get.
This is a duplexer, sometimes called diplexer. And basically all it does is it takes two signals from two different antennas, combines them for one output to a radio, or vice versa. You could have two radios and one antenna that's a dual band antenna so that you don't have cross-band interference between two antennas because, as we know, GMRS and 2 meter are slightly resonant with each other, so you have to have something like this to split those signals, otherwise you run into trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and screw these PL259s on real quick, and we'll go down to business. And we're ready to rock and roll. I've got the 2 meter antenna screwed into the low pass portion of the duplexer. I've got the GMRS antenna screwed into the high pass portion. Common goes down to the radio. Let's get the nano VNA and do a sweep. Now we're checking it right at the radio. And with the coax attached and through the duplex area, we can see they were a little bit high on frequency. So I need to go out and lengthen it just a little bit. I'm going to do that right now. And my adjustment didn't really do what I wanted it to do, but it's good enough. So at 462 or 1.5 something. I would have liked that number to be a little bit lower, but it's good enough. And then when we get up to 467, it's very good. It's flat out. It's 1.0 something. So. Alright, I'm going to go up and spray some paint and we'll be done.